Oh my God, girl, did you watch Game of Thrones this week? East and West Coast feed. <laughs> So right off the top, we have between jobs Jason Statham get attacked by evil Elijah Wood, who took a page out of Lisa Left Eye Lopez's book when they burnt the whole damn town down. Call PETA, American Pharaoh's been left in the toaster oven. Then Brother D was getting reacquainted with the Kardashians for happy hour at Dubai Cost Plus. But then his first order of business was to slut shame his Gorgina incest daughter. What a lovely dress. You don't like it? You must be cold. So then baby K sues mine in her own business trying to run her indie female startup when she gets harassed by this misogynistic dick. How much for your little clam? Because she was supposed to slip slender and that killer roofie, but when she saw Colonel Mustard and that asshole that shanked her fencing teacher, she decided to change course. Bitch has priorities. And then, baby Casey, Harriet the Spies herself into the best little whorehouse in Bravos. Everybody knows that you never shuck and fuck in a whorehouse. That's like a really good way to get like MRSA, C. diff. Right staff. Ugh. They say oysters get the juices flowing. And then after that, we get a glimpse of her mark, Night's Guard R. Kelly, who really has Woody Allen's taste in women. Too old. Too old. Good. So then between jobs, Jason Statham decides that he's declining the Father of the Year award when he tells little baby Galapagos it's her time to contribute to the war sash. I want to help you. She thinks she's just gonna have to like do some photo ops, do some press junkets. But instead, she's led to the Aggie bonfire where she becomes a very reluctant Joan of Arc. Father, don't do this! Please, please, Father! Father, help! Being burned at the stake is almost as bad as one of the three times I've crapped my pants this year. Because I had made the fatal mistake of drinking like a kombucha with yogurt land with a goat cheese seafood salad. And to make matters worse, my lesbian neighbors were having a fucking barbecue and I had to run upstairs in shitted Lululemon yoga tights. Did you throw away your Lululemons? Hell no, girl, those were like $109. I threw those bitches in the washer, and best believe I wear those all the time. So anyway, back to the episode. Middle-aged Jared Leto is emceeing at the Rose Bowl. Oh my god, and then Christina Aguilera was super uncomfy with the gladiator situation. Then Sir Carlisle. Kevin Costner and bodyguards his way to the top when he defends Christina Aguilera from that evil Party City Mardi Gras motherfucker that was sneaking up behind her. And then, like, the Party City Mardi Gras troupe started crawling out of the woodwork. They were shanking everybody. Solange was about to get shanked. Muncher swoops and saves the day. Thank god he had her back. I could not have taken it another death tonight. But then there's like, trying to get off the stage, they can't go out there. They can't go out there. There's like nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And then like, Solange and Christina have this Elma and Louise moment when they like, link hands. Keep going. Are you sure? <sighs> yeah. Do it, girl. <laughs> And then, who pops up? None other than Edward James Olmos, the dragon. He's burning people to a crisp, totally helping his mama out, but then like he started getting shanked with these arrows. It was super upsetting. Christina Aguilera wasn't having any of it, so she got on the baby dragon. She was like, girl, fly, girl, fly. I'm glad that they ended with that rather than ending with Shireen being burnt, because that was like the rape all over again. Ugh. Which one? Yes, queen, this is giving me Nymira San realness. Where are my dragons?